الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وفقها في الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم انشر علينا برحمتك وافتح علينا بحكمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We got to the point in the story of Musa عليه السلام when he showed Fir'aun and unequivocal, clear signs of his prophecy, of his mess, if he is the messenger of Allah, and he showed him the staff that turns into a live serpent. And then he showed him the hand that glows bright when he takes it out of his, uh, inside of his cloak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا كُلَّهَا فَكَذَّبَ وَأَبَى And we have showed him all of our signs. وَلَقَدْ أَرَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا كُلَّهَا فَكَذَّبَ وَأَبَى We showed him all of our signs and he rejected and he denied. So he refused to accept the, the belief that Musa was a true messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then yet he accused Musa of being a liar and being a sorcerer. He said, أَجِئْتَنَا لِتُخْرِجَنَا مِنْ أَرْضِنَا بِسِحْرِكَ يَا مُوسَى He said, have you come to drive us out of our land with your magic, O Musa? So he's saying, you Musa, you're nothing but a magician. You're a sorcerer, you're a wizard. And what you showed me is nothing but a trickery. And if you think you're good at your trickery, he said, فَلَنَأْتِيَنَّكَ بِسِحْرٍ مِثْلِهِ We will bring you a magic just like it. We will bring you a magic the like thereof. فَجْعَلْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكَ مَوْعِدًا So when he challenged Musa, he saw a point, a meeting between us and you. لَا نُخْلِفُهُ نَحْنُ وَلَا أَنْتْ Which neither we nor you shall fail to keep. مَكَانًا سُوَى In an open place. So he said, let's meet in a place that is open. Let's show clearly who has the more power. If you come into us with a trickery and magic, then we can match what you bring into us. So he reject a clear sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he called Musa a liar, he called him a rejecter of the truth, and he called him a sorcerer. And we see that it is the same tactics of the tyrants throughout time. When, say, when they see something that is so clear, they reject it and they belie the, the clear signs that are coming with the truth. And yet you see another tactic here of the tyrants. See what Pharaoh told Musa. He said, أَجِئْتَنَا لِتُخْرِجَنَا مِنْ أَرْضِنَا بِسِحْرِكَ يَا مُوسَى You come to us so you can take us, to, so you can drive us out of our land. You can drive us out of our homes. Now we see Musa never asked Pharaoh to be taken out of his home. He never demanded that the people of Pharaoh, that the people of Pharaoh will be driven out of their homes. So why is Pharaoh saying, "Ajitana li tukhrijana min ardina"? You want to expel us out of our own land, out of our own home. And the explanation of that is this: two different explanation. Number one is Pharaoh is using a scare tactic. He's telling the Egyptians that Musa is after you because he wants to occupy the land. He wants to drive you out of your land and make it the land of the Israelites. He wants to have power over this land that you live in. And Musa was ne never asked for that and that's not his mission, that's not his goal. His goal was to drive the people of Israel out of Egypt to a safer place because they've been oppressed by Pharaoh. So that's one interpretation of that claim. The other interpretation is Pharaoh is addressing the Israelites themselves. Say, don't follow this man. He wants just to drive you out of your own homes with his magic. Because Musa comes to the people of Israel, he said, I'm the messenger of your Lord, and I want to take you out with me from the land that you've been oppressed in. And Pharaoh is telling him, no, this is your home. Although you know that he's been oppressing them and enslaving them and killing their children. But yet now, as 
the leader, quote unquote, of the land of Egypt, he's saying, don't follow this person who wants to drive you out of your own land. There's this two different interpretation for that call. And then he challenged Musa. He said, have an appointment between us and you in a clear place. And the response of Musa was even more challenging. He said, not even a clear place. He said, مَوْعِدُكُمْ يَوْمُ الزِّينَةِ وَأَيُحْشَرَ النَّاسُ ضُحَى not only I want to bake it in a clear place, but let's make it on the day of the festival. Let's make it on a day, alaykum rahmatullah. Let's make it on a day that people gather from all over the land of Egypt. Let's make it on a day that we have a great gathering of people. And not only that, let's make it on a time of a day, wa yuhshar an nasu duha then the people would be gathered just when the sun has risen after for the forenoon. And that's the best time of the day. Because the sun is not too hot, the day is not too heavy, and people are just fresh in the morning. And that's the best time of the day for show. At that, in that was ancient time when there's no electricity, and things are more clear. They're, they're, they're clearer at that time of the day. The vision... The visual effects are very clear. See, if the meeting was at the dusk or at night or, you know, just at the, the, the break of dawn, you know, he wants to show a physical sign. He wants to show the signs that Allah sent him with it. And the magicians of Pharaoh, also they're going to show their own trickery. So Musa is saying, don't challenge me and say, just want me to be in a place that is clear. I want it to be at the best time of the day where the visual, where the vision is so clear and the time of the day is so appropriate and make it on a day of gathering so the majority of people can attend. So, that, so Musa clearly accepts the challenge of Fir'aun. Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Shara, فَجُمِعَ السَّحَرَةُ لِمِيقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ so the sorcerers were assembled at a fixed time on a day appointed. So Fir'aun appointed that day of the festival. And according to the hadith, it is the day of Ashura. It's the 10th of Muharram. And that was the day when Musa faced those people, the sorcerers. And faced the plotting of Fir'aun. وَقِيلَ لِلنَّاسِ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُجْتَمِعُونَ And he was said to the people, are you two gathering, are you are going to assemble? So it was announced in the land of Egypt that this confrontation is going to take place on that day. And the message of Pharaoh, that we may follow the sorcerers who were on Pharaoh's religion or this, of this belief, the, 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 the sorcerers of, this, of Pharaoh, if they are the winners. So Pharaoh wanted to show his power so people can follow his call. So now the sorcerers come. And we will pay attention to what the sorcerers say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said again in Surah Shara, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ السَّحَرَةُ قَالُوا لِفِرْعَوْنَ أَإِنَّ لَنَا لَأَجْرًا إِن كُنَّا نَحْنُ الْغَالِبِينَ and then when the sorcerers came, they said to Pharaoh, will there surely be a reward for us if we are the winners? He said, yes. And you shall then verily be of those who are brought near to me. So what is driving the sorcerers? The support system of tyranny goes after two, different, two things. And Allah says that for us. These messages in the story of Musa are not for Musa, are not for the people that live there. Their messages are for us, for the entire humanity until the day of judgment. Allah says that those who come to support wrong, those who come to support evil, those who come to support tyranny, they're after two things. And hear them as Allah describes them in these verses. Are we going to be rewarded? We want money. And he said, not only that, نعم, وَإِنَّكُمْ إِذًا لَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ And you will be drawn close to me. So two things, money and power. Money and power is what drives the support system of any tyranny. 
is what drives the support system of any dictatorship. And that holds true from the time of Pharaoh until today, until forever. Until Allah wills to inherit earth and whomever is on the face of the earth. That anybody that supports wrong are after one or two things. Or both at the same time. Money, power. That's what drives evil. You know, in this culture we said money is the root of all evil. And money brings power. And vice versa. Power brings money. So they're really linked together. And that's the driving force beyond everything that is not on the right path. And they were not interested in the truth. Did you hear him at all saying, let's figure out if he is right or not. Let's figure out the truthfulness of his message. Let's figure out the truthfulness of his signs. They were not concerned about any of that. They were concerned about two different things. Can we get money? And are we going to get powerful? Are we going to get closer to the house of power when we, when we show our magic, when we show our trickery? And Pharaoh reassured them. But then Musa had a, different, had a different message for them. Musa admonished them before they started. So Pharaoh said, you will come, come to me, you will have money, and I will draw you closer to me. Then Musa came to them and he said, and that's now in Surah Taha. قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى وَيْلَكُمْ لَا تَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ افْتَرَى but Musa told them, Musa said to them, Wow unto you. Invent not a lie against Allah, lest he should destroy you completely by torment. And surely he who invents a lie against Allah will fail miserably. Musa come to them and he promised them nothing but the truth. He's not promising them money, he's not promising them power, but he said, you are going to face a sign of your Lord. You are going to face a sign of Allah. And if you belie the sign, if you reject what you can see clearly, then you will be tormented. Then torment will be poured upon you. You get a chance to believe, and when the signs are clear before you, and you turn them down, then that person is worthy of the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now Allah explains, Allah describes to us how now they heard both sides. They heard Pharaoh and what he's offering, and they heard the warning, the clear warning of Musa. They went into a conference. They went aside. It's a very beautiful visual Message, visual scene in the Quran. Tanazau amrahum baynahum. They started discussing. Tanazau, just like you know, arguing with each other, discussing things aside. Baynahum, between amongst each other. Wa asarul najwa, and they kept their talk secret. They went aside and then they started conferring with each other. Qalu in hadan ila sahiran yuridani an yukhrijakum min ardikum bi sihrihima wa yadhhaba bi tariqatikum al mutla and they concluded that these two meaning Harun and Musa verily these are two magicians he said don't don't you know so at that point the side that is winning in their minds and in their hearts was the side of Pharaoh they're blinded by the promise of Pharaoh. And plus they have not really seen anything from Musa yet. They have not seen what Musa can do by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But amongst themselves they said, don't, don't reject the promise of money and power from Pharaoh for two magicians. Their object is to drive you out from your lands with their magic. Whose message is that? It's the message of Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, these two are trying to drive you out of your land with your magic. And overcome your chiefs and your nobles. They want to overcome the hierarchy, the aristocracy, your, 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 your whole social system. Musa is coming to destroy your system. يَذْهَبَا بِطَرِيقَتِكُمُ الْمُثْلَى And they want to overcome your best way. You know, they have a structure in their, in their society. And that society, Fir'aun is the Lord. He said, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى 
ما علمت لكم من إله غيري. He claimed rububiyyah and he claimed uluhiyyah. Both. In that society. And then they have a hierarchy of noblemen, aristocracy. The people that are gathered around that, that, that system of tyranny to support it. Again, for two main reasons, money and power. And they have the religious support. The ones that, that have the false religion of Fir'aun. Again, for the same reason. To get higher positions closer to Fir'aun and to get money. And the Sahara, the sorcerers, are after the very same goal. So I said that Musa, if, if, we, if we believe in that, this whole system will collapse. Because that will show that Fir'aun is a liar, that there is a lord above Fir'aun, and the entire social system will fall down. This is, not, this is not a simple challenge. This is not a magic challenge. This challenge actually will destroy your whole system. And it is true. Then they said, what was their decision? فَأَجْمِعُوا كَيْدَكُمْ ثُمَّ تُصَفَّى So, devise your plot and assemble in line. Come as one man. Come clearly together. Come on one message and one goal to destroy the trickery of Musa. To destroy whatever Musa is bringing to us. And it is not trickery. It is a clear message from our Lord as we will see. And then they said, وَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْيَوْمَ مَنِ اسْتَعْلَى And whomever overcomes this day will indeed be successful. Whomever the winner today will be the successful one. And that was a true thing that they said. But they did not expect the outcome of that challenge. So they come and they're charged now. You know, they decided they, they will come. And they will overcome Musa. So they come now self-confident. He said, you know, who are, there's only two of them. And there's so many of us. And we are the best in the land. We are the best sorcerers. We are the best magicians. And we have a great reward before us. So they come and they challenge Musa. قَالُوا يَا مُوسَىٰ إِمَّا أَن تُلْقِيَ وَإِمَّا أَن نَكُونَ نَحْنُ الْمُلْقِينَ In Surah Al-A'raf they said, O oh Musa, you either you throw first or shall we throw first? And that played right into Musa's hand. And this is the plotting of Allah. قَالَ بَلْ أَلْقُوا قَالَ أَلْقُوا No, you throw first. فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْا سَحَرُوا أَعْيُنَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَرْهَبُوهُمْ وَجَاءُوا بِسَهْرٍ عَظِيمٍ And Allah says, so when they threw, they bewitched the eyes of the people and struck terror into them and they displayed a great magic. So they were not simple illusionists. If Allah described that type of magic as great, then they really had great secrets. They had knowledge of what they were doing. But what they did is they had visual illusions. They made people think that what they're throwing was turning into live objects, was turning into snakes and serpents. Saharu ayun al nas. They could not turn the robes into snakes, but they made people think. This is what Allah says. Saharu ayun al nas. People thought they see snakes, but they could not put lives in those objects. Who gives life? Allah. Who can only turn nothing into something? It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who can bring dead into a life thing? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of these people have the power to give life. No one can give life other than Allah. But the only thing they can do, سَحَرُوا أَعْيُنَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَرْهَبُوهُمْ And they put terror into them. And when, they, when people are, are faced with that kind of awesome magic and trickery, you can imagine things. And we see now today, if you go to even an illusion show, sometimes you're just really stunned about how things are happening before your eyes. And those people that are practicing black magic, they have effect on people's mind. And this is what Allah said, and they display the great magic. So Musa saw that. And Musa is a human being. And he, and he saw what Allah described as great magic. This was not a simple trickery. فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مُوسَى So Musa conceived fear in himself. Even Musa. See, Allah says, استرحبوهم. They put terror in people's heart. Musa was not terrorized. 
but he conceived some fear that what they're showing was really convincing to a human being. Then Allah says, Allah inspires to Musa. Allah says, fear not. قُلْنَ لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى Fear not. Surely you will have the upper hand. Because you are throwing in the name of Allah. And they, what did they say? قَالُوا بِعِزَّةِ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّا نَحْنُ الْغَالِبُونَ By the glory of Fir'aun, we will overcome. And when Musa is throwing, he will say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And Allah says, you are the highest. Fear not. Don't even have that little bit of fear in your heart. What do we derive out of this? When we face evil that has great power, we can sometimes be afraid. And that comes from our humanity, from being human beings. When we face a powerful tyranny, a forceful dictatorship, a strong evil, we can feel fear in our hearts. If Musa, the strong person, the strong man, al qawi al-Amin, inna khayra man istajart al qawi al-Amin, Allah described him in the Quran as the strong, the honest, the trustworthy. If he is Musa, and he can sometimes feel a little fear. It is natural to feel fear when we are faced with great evil, strong tyranny, some people that are completely ruthless. But yet Allah is assuring us, as He assured Musa, لا تخف. If you are with Allah, no one can hurt you. And the Hadith Qudsi, ما زال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه. فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وكنت بصره الذي يبصر به وكنت يده التي يبطش بها. Allah says my servant will not come close to me with anything more than what I have made an obligation upon him. But my servant come closer and closer to me with extra ibadah, with extra worship until I love him. And when I love my servant, I become his hearing that he hears with. And I become his side that he sees with. And I becomes his hand that he fights with. So when we are with Allah, we should fear nothing. The natural human fear should be overcome by our faith. Even if we feel some natural fear when we are faced with this ruthless evil, but we should remember the story of Musa. قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى وَأَوْخِ مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ تَلْقَفُ مَا صَنَعُوا إِنَّمَا صَنَعُوا كَيْدُ سَاحِرُ وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى And throw that which is in your right hand and it will swallow up what they have made. That which they made is only a magician's trick and the magician will never be successful. Allah said, don't be, don't, you know, this is again a message that when we, when we contemplate, when we reflect on these stories, even if we see evil high or powerful for a while, we need to understand that the end of the story is not like that. Allah describes the plotting of shaitan, kaidu shaitani, kana kaidu shaitani da'ifa. Even shaitan himself is weak. And the only thing that is truth, that is true, is the strength of iman. And the only thing that brings strength to us is our faith. So Allah says, throw that what's in your right hand, in the name of Allah. And it will swallow what they have put down. What they have put down is nothing but trickery and wicked magicians work. And that will never be successful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَلْقِ عَصَاكَ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ, ما يأفكون فَوَقَعَ الْحَقِّ وَبَطَلَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فَغُلِبُوا هُنَالِكَ وَانْقَلَبُوا صَاغِرِينَ Allah says, and we reveal to Musa, throw your stick. And behold, it swallowed up straight away all the falsehood which they have showed. So that true live serpent that Allah put life into it, it swallowed all the sticks and the ropes that they have thrown. And all that visual illusion went in completely astray before people's eyes. 
فَوَقَعَ الْحَقِّ Thus the truth was confirmed. وَبَطَلَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And all that they did was made of no effect. All that just went into nothing. فَغُلِبُوا هُنَالِكَ So they were defeated there. It was a clear defeat for those magicians. وَانْقَلَبُوا صَاغِرِينَ And they returned disgraced. So what happened? Those sorcerers, that they were just coming to show their powerful magic, their black magic and sorcery, and they want to get money and wealth out of it, and they want to get power, and they want to get close to Fir'aun, they saw the truth. They know magic from truth. They are masters. Allah says, جَاءُوا بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ They brought great magic. They're the top of what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And when they saw this, they knew that this is not magic. And it is the same thing. When, when Quraysh was accusing Muhammad وسلم, that the words of Quran are nothing but poetry, but when they go and hear it, they knew exactly that it was not poetry. This is not poetry. And we saw like Al-Walid ibn Ghira, when he goes and he listened to it, they would ask, what should we say? He said, this is not poetry. I know poetry. And this is not, this is not just beautiful Arabic verses. These are not the words of a human being. He said, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ بَشَرٍ This cannot be words of a human being. And the same thing with the magicians. When they see the clear sign that Allah challenged them with it, they knew that this is not a magic of a human being. This is way above that. وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ Allah said, then the sorcerers fell down in prostration to Allah. They saw a clear sign. Just like Fir'aun saw it. But Fir'aun was stubborn and arrogant. But the magicians saw the truth and they fell down in prostration. وَأُلْخِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ We believe in the Lord of the worlds. آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ رَبِّ مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ The Lord of Musa and Harun. That is the true Lord. That is Rabbuna al-A'la. That is our highest Lord, not you, Fir'aun. This is clearly not magic. This is clearly the work of Allah. So they fell in prostration and they declared before people in the forenoon, on the day of festival, that Fir'aun is not the Lord and the Lord of Musa is the higher Lord. And how did Fir'aun respond to that? قَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ You believed in him before I give you permission to do so? See the arrogance. Even when he knew that he chose those sorcerers, he chose them, hand-picked them, him and his chiefs. وَأْتُونِي بِكُلِّ سَحَارٍ عَلِيمٍ Bring every known, knowledgeable magicians to me. And they brought, brought hand-picked by Fir'aun himself. To challenge where is the truth. And the truth is so clear. And so apparent. Yet Fir'aun says, You believed in him before I give you permission to? You need the permission of the slave before you believe in the master. So how does he respond? Just like tyrants and dictators. Theory of conspiracy. He said, you, you, you're all together on this. You, the sorcerers and Musa, you're all together on this. He said, That you are surely, you plotted this together. This is a conspiracy against me. This is a conspiracy against my people. How? I mean, you picked those, those sorcerers. You brought them yourself. You chose the, 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 the challenge. You chose the rules. But yet, that's the arrogance, that's the stubbornness of kufr, of rejection. And he continued on his accusations to them. It is a plot so you can drive the people out of the city. And you will know. Not only that, in Surah Taha, he accused them even of sillier and even more ridiculous accusations. He said, you believe in, the, in him before I give you permission? Verily, he is your chief, he is your master that taught you magician, 
taught you magic. Musa taught you magic. Well, Musa has not been in Egypt for 10 years. At least, right? Musa has been away for a long, long time. And before Musa went away, he was not known to do this. See, the, the, Al-Kufr kulluhu millatun wahida. Kufr, rejection, all the same logic. They have the same sense. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Quraysh, all of a sudden, he turned from As-Sadiq al-Ameen ila Sahirin Kazab. From the truthful, the trustworthy, into a liar magician. And here is Musa, now he is the master magician. He was never known to do any magic. And all of a sudden, Fir'aun said, no, he is the one that taught all of you how to do magic. إِنَّهُ لَكَبِيرُكُمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَكُمُ السَّحْرِ And then he comes into the second tactic of tyranny. I mean, he's defeated. He's completely defeated, there is no doubt about it. Now he starts threatening violence, torture, and murder. He said, فَلَا أُقَطِّعَنَّ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ وَلَا أُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ فِي جُذُوعِ النَّخْلِ وَلَا تَعْلَمُنَّ أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا وَأَبْقَى See the arrogance in that. He said, I will surely cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides. I will put you into permanent handicap. Absolute torture. وَلَا أُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ فِي جُذُوعِ النَّخْلِ And I will crucify you on the trunks of the, of the palm trees. وَلَتَعْلَمُنَّ أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا وَأَبْقَى And you shall surely know which of us, me or the Lord of Musa. See that arrogance. أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا Who has the most severe and more lasting torment? He thinks that he can inflict more torment than Allah. And his torment is more lasting than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Absolute rejection. How do the the, the, and the response, the beautiful response, the beauty of this story to me, is the response did not come from Musa. Musa is not preaching anymore. Musa showed the signs of Allah, and those Sahara, the magicians, that came to challenge Musa, now they're responding. Now they are the ones to respond to Pharaoh. It's not Musa anymore. قالوا لا ضير no harm قالوا لا ضير no problem you want to cut our hands our feet our legs crucify us kill us torture us لا no harm there is no harm لا ضير where is the harm then the harm is if we go back into your religion that's the true harm nothing har- nothing will hurt us anymore when we believe in Allah Listen to them. Inna ila rabbina munqalibun. If you kill us, we are going to our Lord. What can you do to us? What can you do to us to harm us? There is no harm. You cannot cause anything to us. Inna natma'u an yaghfira lana rabbuna khatayana an kunna awwal al-mu'mineen. He said, that's an honor that you're going to do to us. Well, verily, we really hope that our Lord will forgive us our sins that we are the first to believe. You know, السابقون. He said, now we are the, the first to, to declare our belief in this prophet. You know, السابقون in, in the story of Musa are those magicians. He said, this is great. This is no harm in what you're saying. We actually hope that we have lived life of sin under your rule. You made us black magicians, the, the ones that practice black magic evil magic. And, and now we, all we hope is our Lord Allah will forgive our sins because we are the first of the believers. Ibn Abbas said, They came in the morning sorcerers and in the end of the day becomes martyrs. But what a beautiful transformation. And listen in Surah Taha they had an even more response. قَالُوا لَن نُؤْثِرَكَ عَلَى مَا جَاءَنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالَّذِي فَطَرَنَا They said, we will not prefer you over what have come to us of the clear signs and we will not prefer you over, the, over Allah, Him who created us. 
فَقْدِمَا أَنْتَ قَاضِ Then decree whatever you desire to decree. Whatever you want to do with us, do it. Look, look at that strength of Iman. In a moment, when they saw the truth, they turned into the, the, this, the, this absolute strength. Allah subhanahu you just can't but admire when, when the truth comes into that heart. How it changed them. They came that morning, all they want is money, and they want to be closer to Fir'aun. That's the only thing they wanted. And when the, they saw the true signs of Allah, they said, you want to torture us, you want to cut our hands, you want to cut our legs, you want to crucify us, you want to kill us? Fine. Why? إِنَّمَا تَقْضِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا You can only decree in this world. What can you do to us? He said, لَتَعْلَمُنَّ أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا وَأَبْقَى You will see who is more everlasting in his torment. That's what he said. But they said, your power is limited to this world. Even if you have power, you have it only here. Your power is limited. What can you do to us when we die? إِنَّا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّنَا لِيَغْفِرَ لَنَا خَطَايَانَا وَمَا أَكْرَحْتَنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ السِّحْرِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى They said, we believe in our Lord that He may forgive us our faults and the magic with that to which you have, you compelled, you did compel us. The magic that you forced us to do, we ask Allah to forgive that for us. Wallahu khayr, Allah is better. Wa abqa, and His reward is more everlasting. Allah is better in His reward. What can you do? What can you give us? What can you compensate us with? Allah has more. Wallahu khayr. There is nothing now you can lure us with. You can't, you can't tell us you're going to give us anything. Because we know Allah has more. وَأَبْقَى And ever more everlasting. And then they started admonishing Fir'aun. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَأْتِ رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا And those who come to Allah as criminals, belying the, the message of Allah, فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمْ For him is hell. What are you, what are you threatening us with? Is what they're saying. Want to kill us? Okay, death comes. Everybody's going to die. You're going to torture us? You can only torture us in a lifetime. But after we die, they said, when, who comes to Allah and, and, as a criminal, as someone who rejects the truth, to them there is hell. بالله, فإن له جهنم, wherein he will neither die nor live. That that. Torment is eternal. Goes on and on and on. And you cannot die there. He said, whatever you do to us will end when we die. But when you go to Allah, and you will face the torment, you will never die. But you can't live either, because that's not living. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, these are some of the worst description of hell. إِنَّ لَهُ جَأَنَّمَ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا that there is no life nor death in hellfire when he has He can't call that living and you can't die. It's an absolute torment. They said, وَمَنْ يَأْتِهِ مُؤْمِنًا قَدْ عَمِلَ الصَّالِحَاتِ And those who come to Allah believing and they have done the righteous deeds, فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الدَّرَجَاتُ الْعُلَىٰ And those have the highest degrees. جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَٰلِكَ جَزَاءُ مِنْ تَزَكَّى the, the gardens of Eden, the gardens of paradise, everlasting gardens, under which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. Such is the reward of those who purify themselves. Look at those magicians, look at those sorcerers, look at the faith when it comes into the heart, when the, when the truth is so clear. Now anyone that faces the threats of tyranny, anyone that goes under the, the torture and the torment of the dictatorships, should remember those people. And the story goes that they were tormented and they were killed. But here they are. They accepted that. They welcomed that. He said, إِنَّمَا تَقْضِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا 
You can only decree, you can only have power in this life. But when we go to Allah, we will have Jannatu Adn. We will have the gardens of paradise underneath the river flows for eternity. There will be eternal pleasure for us. And that is the reward for those who purify themselves. So that challenge that Pharaoh brought upon himself was an absolute miserable failure for his plotting. And it was a clear sign who was on the right path and who was on the wrong path. Who brought truth and who brought the lie. It was clear that Pharaoh lost every credibility. But now what? Now the people of Pharaoh, the chiefs of Pharaoh will prostrate behind those magicians and say we believe in the Lord of Musa, we believe in the, in, in, in the power of Allah. They have to choose. They have to choose. Either this life or the hereafter. Now they're confronted with a choice after it became very clear to them. وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ They rejected, but it was clear to them where the truth lies. عُلُوَّ Out of arrogance. You know, when we read تَبَّتْ يَدَىٰ أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبْ مَا أَغْنَىٰ عَنْهُ مَالُهُ وَمَا كَسَبْ Abu Lahab had a choice. Abu Lahab knew where the truth is. But he chose his money, his trade, over the truth. And that's why we have a surah in the Quran, Surah Al-Lahab. And now the people of Fir'aun, is the same support of tyranny, the same support of evil, the same concept, the same thinking. What do we choose now? And they stuck to Fir'aun. They stuck with his tyranny, with his evil way, and they stuck with the power, the temporary power, and the temporary wealth that they have in this dunya, in this life. وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنِ أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ They said to Fir'aun, will you leave Musa and his people to spread mischief in the land? And to abandon you, abandon your worship and your gods? And obviously there was a polytheistic society, the religion of the ancient Egyptians. Pharaoh is the representatives of God, but there are just many other gods that they also worship. So did he just, are you going to let him destroy all that structure? Destroy all this order? The order that they are the beneficiaries of. Why they don't like for that order to be changed? Because they are benefiting in money and power. The two things that drive the support of evil from that time to forever. And they said, Musa is coming to corrupt this. He's going to spread mischief. Of course. According to them, he's going to change that whole social order that they're benefiting from. They are oppressors. They're transgressors. And Musa is going to change all of that. He's going to pull the carpet from underneath them by taking the once the, 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 the people of Israel have been enslaved by them and change that order that they have. And he will abandon you and abandon your gods. So what do we do? And here Pharaoh, he, you know, he cannot challenge him into a duel anymore. He cannot show his power because he has no power before the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no logic. We studied in the last two sessions the logical confrontation between Musa and Pharaoh. They tried all of that. They did everything. They talked. They showed their logical evidence. Musa was very clear. Pharaoh had no response. We studied all of that. And now the, finally the physical evidence Pharaoh could not match. What else does he have? What else does tyranny have? قَالَ سَنُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَنَسْتَحِي نِسَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّ فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We'll kill them. We will kill their sons and let the women live so they can continue to serve us, but they will have no power. And indeed, we will have a resistible power over them. We will oppress them. We will even go with a stronger fist. We will go with iron and fire over them. We will, we will strike. That's the logic of tyranny. I have power, I'm going to use it. I don't care what the truth is. 
and the response of Musa. Now the really the true oppression and persecution increased for the people of Israel, increased for the children of Yaqub alayhi salam. قال موسى لقومه استعينوا بالله واصبروا إن الأرض لله يريثها من يشاء من عباده والعاقبة للمتقين. موسى said to his people, seek help in Allah and be patient. And it is important to reflect upon these verses for anyone that faces tyranny, anyone that faces oppression. How to respond to that? Be patient and stick to your message. Sta'inu billah. Seek help in Allah. And be patient and persevere. Endure that. Inna al-arda lillahi yurituha min yasha'u min ibadi. May it be clear to you that earth is Allah's dominion. Allah is the true king. And he gives it as a heritage to whom he wills of his slaves. Wal'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. And the blessed end is for the pious. It is for ones who stick to the true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The children of Israel said, قَالُوا أُوذِينَا مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَأْتِيَنَا وَمِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جِئْتَنَا What did you change for us? We have been hurt before you come, and now we are hurt after you come to us. So he's telling be patient, and they said, why do we need to be patient? Nothing changed. You know, we were, they were used to kill our children before you come, before you came, and now they are killing our children after you came. So why, what, what has, what has changed? What has changed is the test, is the trial that Allah put forth for the believers. What has changed is the support that Allah sent in the form of a message and a messenger, two messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent for them. And the guidance that Musa is bringing with them, he said, be patient. Patience is a virtue, and it is its own reward before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patience is the best thing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nobody has been given a gift better than patience. And patience and its true conditions before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, they were a little bit tight with that. But they said, why, why do we need to be patient? Musa said, عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَن يُهْلِكَ عَدُوَّكُمْ وَيَسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ It may be that your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successors on the earth so that he may say how you act. He said, don't hasten this, don't rush this. May Allah destroy your enemy and you might have the power one day on earth and then you will be asked for how you act. You will be asked for your own actions. And be careful. Now you are under tyranny. You are being oppressed. But sometime you might be the oppressor. Be watchful. Be careful. Learn from that experience. And learn in a positive way that you might learn how to be compassionate to others and how you may not oppress others. Allah will see what you will do when you become the successors on earth. And with that, inshallah, we will stop tonight. If there's any quick comment, I think we have a minute or two. And then other than that, if, if uh, maybe we'll just go to the dua and close for Adhan Aisha, inshallah. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. نكتمي إن شاء الله نكسر.